Hi, today we'll be going through a few practice exercises of finding the relative complement of sets and finding the absolute complement of sets. They're basically the same thing, but with different notation. So if you're here to learn about the complement of a set, you are in the right place. And I encourage you, as soon as you think you're ready, to try these exercises before watching the solution. Here we've got two sets, A and B. Let's see some examples of relative complement. What is the relative complement of B with respect to A? For starters, how do we even write it? A common way to write the relative complement of B with respect to A is as subtraction, A minus B. Another common way is to write it like this, A slash B. Both of these refer to the same thing, the relative complement of B with respect to A. It's the set of all elements in A except for those that are also in B. That's why I like this subtraction notation. It suggests that we're subtracting the elements of B away from the set A. So if we do that, what are we gonna get? Well, we see that two is an element of B, so it's not gonna be an element of A minus B, or the relative complement of B with respect to A. Again, those are just different ways of referring to the same thing. And five is an element of B, so five will not be in our set either. And so what have we got? We've got the set containing one, three, and four. You might notice, of course, in this example, B is a sub set of A. So every element of B is an element that's going to get removed from A when we look at this relative complement or this set subtraction. However, to take the complement of one set with respect to another, it is not necessary to have this subset relation. We could look at the opposite order. Consider the set B minus A. This is the relative complement of A with respect to B. It's the set of all elements in B except for those that are also in A. So what's it equal to? Well, two is in A, so it will get removed from our complement. 5 is in A, so it will get removed from our complement. Then you might wonder, what about 1, 3, and 4? Well, they are not in the set B, so nothing happens with them. We don't care about them. We are just left with the empty set. B minus A, the complement of A with respect to B, is the empty set because B has no elements that are not in A. And if it's helpful, here is Venn diagram form for two generic sets, X and Y. The relative complement of Y with respect to X, also written as X minus Y, is the orange shaded region. Every Everything in X that isn't in Y. All right, let's hurry this thing up and get on to the next examples. Here we now have a universal set so we can see what's called an absolute complement. What is the absolute complement of A? Well, it's written like that or like that with a C in the superscript, or like that. Those are all common notations for absolute complement. When we take an absolute complement, it's understood that there's some underlying universal set that contains all elements we're interested in, in whatever the given context is. Oftentimes, this will be the set of real numbers or the set of integers or the set of rational numbers, just for some examples. Here, our universal set U is the set of all positive integers from one to 10. So the absolute complement of A is the set of all elements of U that are not in A. So an absolute complement is just a relative complement with respect to the universal set. So you can think of it as beginning with the universal set and then subtracting all elements of A. So we get rid of one, we get rid of two, we get rid of three, we get rid of four, and we get rid of five, and what remains is the absolute complement of A. It can be thought of logically as not A, or the negation of A. It contains everything, that is, everything in the universal set, except for the stuff that's in A. For a quick example with words, let's say the universal set is the set of all students who completed a calculus course. What is the complement of the set of students who passed? Well, that would be the set of students who failed. All right, how about the next example? What's the absolute complement of B? Again, it can be written like this, B prime, or B with a C in the superscript, or B with a bar over the top of it. And again, an absolute complement is just a relative complement taken with respect to the universal set. This is the relative complement of B with respect to the universal set. The universal set can be anything, but in this case, it's this set here. 
And again, the absolute complement just contains everything, all the elements we're interested in, which are the ones in the universal set, except for the ones in B. We take those ones out. So we get rid of two, we get rid of five, everything else remains as the absolute complement. So there is our absolute complement of B with this as our universal set. All right, let's see another one. Here is gonna be a little bit of a messier example, so no worries if you don't quite follow. But if you're pretty good with your set theory and interval notation, you should be able to do this just fine. Here we have R, the set of real numbers, and N, the set of natural numbers. Now, certainly, the natural numbers are a subset of the real numbers. Every natural number is also a real number. So what would happen if we considered the naturals minus the reals? That's the relative complement of the reals with respect to the naturals, which, remember, is often written like like this. Well, we'd have to remove all real numbers from the naturals, which would leave us with the empty set. So that's not super interesting. Let's say the real numbers are our universal set, and we take the absolute complement of the naturals. What is that going to leave us with? Well, the absolute complement will have almost all of the real numbers, except for an infinite number of holes at all the natural numbers. So what we'll have to do to describe this absolute complement in some way other than this is take a big union. Certainly, for any natural number, say i, our absolute complement of the naturals will contain every real number from i, but not including i, all the way up to i plus 1, but not including i plus 1. That's the open interval from i to i plus 1. And we will have all of those open intervals in our absolute complement from i equals 1 all the way to infinity. So this is an infinite union of open intervals. It accounts for all of the holes at the natural numbers. So it's going to give us all the real numbers that are greater than 1 and are not natural numbers. But what about all the other real numbers that are less than 1? Well, to finish that off, we can just union this infinite union with the open interval that contains all real numbers from negative infinity up to 1, and we're done. That is the absolute complement of the naturals with the real numbers as our underlying universal set. All right, to finish things off, let's do some rapid-fire examples. Let U be a generic universal set, and S is some subset of U. What is the empty set minus S, which is, again, the relative complement of S with respect to the empty set? Well, it consists of all elements in the empty set except for those in S. There are no elements in the empty set, so this is just the empty set. What is S minus the empty set, the relative complement of the empty set with respect to S? Well, it contains all elements of S except for those in the empty set. The empty set has no elements, so nothing is removed and we're left with S. It's like subtracting zero. All right, what is the absolute complement of the universal set? Well, by definition, it contains everything in the universal set except for what's in the universal set. That means it contains nothing. There is nothing that is both in the universal set and not in the universal set, so the complement of the universal set is the empty set. What is the absolute complement of the empty set? It contains everything in the universe except what's in the empty set. There's nothing in the empty set, so nothing gets removed. We're left with the entire universal set U. So those were just a handful of exercises involving set complements, relative complements, and absolute complements, and I hope this collection helped you really solidify your understanding of this operation. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. Thank you.